Francis Scott Key was born and raised on a plantation called Terra Rubra in Western Maryland. He lived a charmed childhood, supported by enslaved labor. By 1814, he himself had been a slave owner for over a decade and become a well-accomplished lawyer in Georgetown. During the Battle of Baltimore, he stood aboard the deck of an American truce ship. He was there because he had agreed to help John Skinner negotiate for the release of a prisoner of war named Dr. William Beans. They negotiated for Beans' release successfully, but they were not allowed to leave the area. The British feared that if they came back to Baltimore, they may share plans for the bombardment, and so they were forced to stay. Francis Scott Key stood on his ship and watched as the British opened fire on Fort McHenry. He witnessed 1,800 glaring rockets and bursting bombs being fired in and around the walls of Fort McHenry. He was scared. He had served at the Battle of Bladensburg, which was a great embarrassment for American forces, who ran quickly after the battle had begun. He was afraid that the same thing might happen here at Fort McHenry. But as we know today, it didn't. After 25 hours, the British guns stopped firing. The flag that was on top of Fort McHenry's flagpole was lowered. He was terrified. No gunfire and no flag on the flagpole could be a sign of defeat. And for half an hour, his fears remained intact. But at 7.30 that morning, American forces fired the morning gun, played Yankee Doodle, and raised the garrison flag, the large 30 by 42 foot spangled banner to the top of the flagpole. The image of this flag inspired Key to write about what he had witnessed during the battle. He wrote about the bravery and determination of the men who stayed here for 25 hours by their guns, firing at the British ship. This became the Star Spangled Banner, and in 1931, our national anthem, a song that is tied to our American identity. 